for past. Just strictly Percy Jackson, but today we wanted to talk about grooming because it's a theme throughout the books, but it's also kind of happening in the fandom a bit. And um, we definitely want to talk about that. I also had a post that got a little bit big recently about the Cody Co and Tana situation. And that's even a conversation that needs to be weaved into this because grooming can happen you know, like to anybody, it can happen to adults, it can happen to children. Of course, we're going to focus on teenagers right now because of the subject matter we usually deal with. Mm -hmm. um, but like, grooming doesn't always look like adult with lots of power kid who has no power. Sometimes it looks like a kid with status and an adult with similar status, but that's still not even footing. Yeah. And also, I think that whole situation with Tana is a good example that like at the time you can think that it's fine. And then later on you realize like, I'm not fine with this anymore. Mm -hmm. And it, cause that's very much like what happened with her. Like at the time when people like Gabby Hanna were talking about him doing that with her, she, she was looking at it as like, I don't want you talking about who I'm sleeping with as like gossiping about her when mm -hmm. in reality, like adults around her were like, this is wrong. And she now realizes that it's wrong. And so that's a, also a very common thing that happens in those sort of situations is that you don't, you can realize later on and change your mind about everything. You're, you're allowed to do that. Yes, exactly. So to get into like the Percy Jackson context that kind of got us thinking about this episode, is that there is a person on the actual like acting crew he currently plays chris rodriguez in the show um forgot his actual name andrew something is it andrew anderson or andrew alvarez yeah i knew it was an a an uh, alliterative um but he has supposedly been helping fans who make fan edits by sending them videos that he has exclusively of Charlie. And he's been like in DMs with them for hours, apparently. And this is, we, we can't find much to back this up besides this one person's post and all the comments on it. So, um, you know, like we do want to stress that this is just, you know, like a very small allegation at the moment and um, that like, we don't know exactly what's happening with it, mm -hmm. but we do want to just like pitch it as if, you know, like, you know, what you should do if you're a fan of a series and you somehow do happen to get into the ear of an actor or a crew member that feels a similar age to you. Yeah. And like the situation with him is just almost like a good way to like have a conversation because it was more about the video that I saw where somebody was like acknowledging it, mm -hmm. a lot of the comments were people like j kids, like I'm assuming like confused about why that would be wrong. Like yeah. why it would be wrong of him to talk to fans that long or like, or why that would be inappropriate. And I was like, well, that's something that we can at least try to talk about, or at least try to start a conversation to talk about that, to explain, try to explain like why that would be inappropriate. Yeah. Um, well, you and I have been on the internet for as long as, you know, like teens and kids could be on the internet. And uh, we've seen grooming happen on the internet in multiple different forms. We've seen it happen with like very rudimentary websites and chats. We've seen it happen on apps like this. Um, we've seen it happen on gaming, on Discord. Um, so it's just... I think one thing that was hard to kind of put yourself in the mindset of the very first idea of influencers that we kind of grew up with was being MySpace famous. <laughs> and that felt attainable. Like these people weren't on TV. They weren't on like, even if they were musicians, they weren't mainstream musicians. They were normal people that just happened to have thousands and thousands and thousands of people following them or paying attention to them online for some reason. And that is probably where a lot of grooming started for people in our generation is just like, 
oh, well, it's not really a famous person and they happen to be my same age or around my age or close enough to my age that they're barely an adult and I'm a teenager. So this doesn't feel wrong. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm a little, I'm a little bit older than she, than Mandy is. And that when I first, very first got online, which was when I was like 12, which was in 1997, mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of like, you know, like the generic chat rooms, yeah. <laughs> like you would see now. And there were people in those chat rooms sometimes that would impersonate celebrities mm -hmm. as a way to like get close to kids. And so there's always, even before there was like a place where there was like kind of micro celebrities that seemed more approachable to people. There was always a way for people online to try to talk, use the internet to try to talk to kids they don't know. and use like people that they like as a way to try to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're a kid, you don't necessarily understand why it's wrong, which again, goes back to that comment section that had us thinking we should talk about this. Um, and it's not necessarily that you should never be able to talk to somebody that's famous or somebody that you admire, but you really got to question how they're talking about you, the method of communication, if it's private, if they're asking you to keep anything secret, um, you know, if they're telling you very intimate things to get very intimate things back, that's when it starts to feel like, okay, this isn't just talking to somebody I admire. Yeah, like the thing about the situation with, with Andrew Alvarez that made me concerned was, this may seem random, but the fact that he, at least at one point, very soon to now was Mormon <laughs> and yeah. is like very Christian, like just earlier today, he posted a photo of like the Bible um, and he has like Bible verses and his thing. Like, I don't know if he's necessarily Mormon anymore. A lot of people who are Mormon end up leaving at the around the age that he is. So it's <laughs> possible that he's not that religion anymore. But a big part of that religion is talking to people that you don't know, like you're supposed to. And it's looked at as like, oh, God is like having me be in contact with these people because he wants me to spread his word sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like there is no boundaries in Mormonism at all. There's, you are looked down on if you have boundaries. Um, you're supposed to give everything up for the church. You're not supposed, and especially with like younger girls, uh, younger girls are supposed to like date and get married as soon as humanly possible. And so there's a lot of like grooming stuff that tends to happen in those sort of religions anyway. And so that on top of the idea that he was like sending videos of people that he knows in real life that are friends of his, that mm -hmm. are these like famous people to like people that he that are like to like Percy Jackson like fan accounts so that they can use them in their videos and that I'm I'm pretty sure the reason why people even found out this was happening is because the 14 year olds that he was talking to probably posted and like thanked him for like, like sending that stuff to him like you would because they don't realize that anything is wrong and there's like there's like seven different levels of, of, of like of like things that are going on there that are all like hard to navigate, I guess. And with a show like this, where the star, almost all of them are young, mm -hmm. like Andrew and Charlie are the oldest and they're like 20. Yeah. Um, it, I just, it feels like a good idea to try to like, just talk about that idea of what is appropriate even for people that you idolize like mm -hmm. what should what should they be doing because i guess one thing with this i wanted to make clear is that not only with the andrew situation but with any other situation like that it's very possible that when you come from a religion like that that like wants you to talk to people and thinks that that's a good thing that you don't even think that what you're doing is wrong yeah and so it's very possible that he did not think that he was doing anything wrong and it, just ended up doing it any like there's that's one of those things about like abusive things that people don't like they don't like the idea that like you could do something that's harming someone without realizing that you're doing it people mm -hmm. want to believe that you have to have like malicious intent but legitimately you can do things that are harmful to people without realizing what you're doing is harmful 
sometimes. Sometimes that does happen. <laughs> and this could be a situation like that. Yeah, like, and whether his end goal is to, you know, like, do something more sinister or simply just to be a representative of Christ and, you know, like Christ like morals or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's once you get to a certain level of stardom, the idea of talking to fans, even if let's say he was still a teenager himself, let's say he was still under 18, it still doesn't sit right, you know? Like it still feels like the power imbalance is too much to where he can use the fact like i am a tv star i am on this show and i could get you into these parties or i could i could get you exclusive percy jackson merch or whatever you know it may be that is still more power in this situation to then manipulate somebody who may not know better oh yeah and so one of our, our regular person asked who andrew is andrew is andrew alvarez who plays chris rodriguez on Percy Jackson. Um, he was in yeah. like the first, the second episode, I think. Yeah, so, so far, super small role, which like, if this does turn into something bigger is thankful because, you know, it's small enough that he could be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, but his role does get larger as the books go on. And mm -hmm. so, you know, like, this is the kind of situation that if it is something brewing, you know, Disney should probably jump on it. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and with a show like this where the stars are so young too, I think that that doesn't help. Um, but kind of going back to, I started off with Tana and Cody Co. I wanna talk about that for a second because with that situation, I have been questioning how I, as I, I was probably like 24 to 26. I don't remember what year the video came out with her and Cody collabing. That was definitely like it had vibes, um, but it didn't register me, to me at the time as something predatory because influencer culture was so different back then. Like that was the heyday of Instagram where people were posting a lifestyle for other people. It wasn't like, it's a little more real now, I feel like, mm -hmm. but back then it was about, you know, the opulence of being a influencer, of going to these parties, of having endless like wish and she in outfits and stuff, you know, because you were able to drop $2,000 and get a huge bag full of clothes. Um, that was the era that she potentially had that thing with Cody Co. And because influencers felt a little bit more untouchable because it was starting to feel like real celebrity, the power balance didn't register to your normal everyday viewer of this. And I also, I think at the time I didn't know how old Cody was. I was aware he was an actual adult and Tana was still 17, mm -hmm. but the age difference didn't hit me as much because I mean, he's, he seems like the kind of white dude where all of a sudden he's going to age when he's older, you know, like he has a young face now still, he still looks pretty much the same as when he entered the internet, but like in a few years, he's going to look like an old fucking man, you know? Yeah. One, I miss like so much of like YouTube stuff, like people mention things about people like that. And I have no idea who most of them are. And <laughs> I learned about who like Tana was and I never actually, this, I think it's funny that I never actually looked at like Cody's YouTube channel before. It was <laughs> like my brain knew that there was something wrong there. Um, but I learned about a lot of those people in like 2020, 2021 during COVID, I watched a bunch of like um, deep dive like video essay kind of videos on a lot of those people on YouTube just because I was wondering who all these people were that people kept talking about and now I look back at that stuff and I think that I didn't watch any of those people because they probably reminded me of the stuff that was going on that they're all not talking about like one of the weirdest things when you have like a very traumatic past, including grooming things and other 
bad things is even with the years when you don't deal with it is that you naturally just like avoid people who remind you of that even if you don't know that's what you're doing like mm -hmm. i think it's so funny that i never listened to any of drake's music <laughs> like oh my gosh, yeah. i just avoided him and because i remember way back in the day on like back in like i don't know 2011 or something i saw like on twitter people talking about how there are rumors about him with like young girls and i just like never listened to any of his music ever again after that i don't even know what his music sounds like or like what his his rapping voice sounds like or even his normal sounding voice I don't know anything about him and so okay. I think that I just I probably saw a video somewhere along the way and just avoided every all of those people because it just made me know that like something is wrong here and people are going to figure it out one day but I can tell that there's something wrong because it's just too similar like all of the people are I remember like learning once about David Dobrik mm -hmm. and just the in general idea of here's this person whose entire YouTube channel is about him making other people he knows do crazy pranks and then recording them all online I was just like there's no way that there's something horrible happening in this house because he has all of the power yeah nobody else does and so I think I just avoided all of that until all until people like Tana and like I remember in 2021 when she first started talking about it Mm -hmm. I was so surprised that nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. Like, I was surprised, but I also wasn't surprised, but I still was surprised that this, like, very young, she's only 26 now. She was 23 then, so she was, she's so young to, like, be, to be talking about something like that then. Like, she's, she's just now, now, the age that she was when Cody, like, that Cody was when he was doing that to her, like, when she was 17 yeah and so it's like she was such a young person that it it generally like shocked me that the internet was like well she's annoying so i don't care that this older man obviously like took advantage of it was just like okay i i i don't even know what to say about that I don't see the fame on fame thing the same way which like that's the essence of the the cody co tana thing and i think even a little bit of millie bobby brown and drake um that we're like, oh, it's not weird that they're talking because they're both famous and maybe they run in the same circles or maybe maybe they're somehow connected through an agent or something like that, you know? Um, but no, Millie was posting photos of herself on her Instagram being like, Drake took this. That's mm -hmm. weird. <laughs> like, that's where it starts to get weird, you know? Yeah, she was like four, 13, 14, and he was 29 then. And it, like, she just mentioned, I'm, I can like so vividly remember her just like mentioning it at an interview for like the probably one of the seasons of Stranger Things and just mentioning it to an interviewer and just yeah. being like, oh, um, yeah, Drake Drake's a good friend of mine. And the interviewer was like, what? Yes. Like you can see like the interviewer in like fight or flight, fight or flight, like what what did you just say? And but it was like she just mentioned it as if it was nothing because she didn't see that there was anything wrong with it. Yeah. Because she was a young because she was in like eighth grade. <laughs> so like yeah, she wouldn't she wouldn't I guess that's one thing that I wanna like there's a like we were talking about this before we when we were doing like our our research and stuff about this subject that there's a lot of stuff out there about grooming mm -hmm. from like the context of if you're like an adult, like if you're a parent to like help you know, like warn your kids against it or whatever. But yeah, um, one, sometimes the parent is the one that's grooming you. So that's not helpful. Uh, <laughs> two, sometimes your parents don't give a fuck about you yeah or they have their own issues and problems from whatever they experienced when they were younger and they don't think there's anything wrong with that sort of behavior and so it bothers me that there isn't that much out there that is directed at like kids like just talking to kids directly because kids are not stupid <laughs> and yeah. if you talk to them they can figure it out um so in that vein i just wanted to say just to start off that um I feel like there's a lot of the ways that people talk about it is like just to make clear that like there's nothing wrong with kids for not realizing 
mm -hmm. it happen that it's literally like a developmental like scientific thing that like your brain and is just not developed enough to like think these complicated things out without somebody else kind of helping guide you along yeah and if, you, if that has ever happened to you there's nothing wrong with you you are like doing exactly what you should do you're supposed to be an innocent child you're yeah. not supposed to be forced to realize that people are capable of doing these sort of things it's the other person's fault for taking advantage of the fact that they know that you don't know these things because it's like scientifically impossible for you to know these things it's not because you're not because you're stupid or you're not or you're like not good enough or something Mm -hmm. I don't see that mentioned enough, but it's literally like, it's an impossibility for you to know these things unless somebody does it to you or somebody else tries to explain it to you. Yeah. And well, it's also worth saying, and again, this is not the victim's fault, but groomers like to choose people that are easy to groom. And again, not the victim's fault. But you may be easy to groom for things that are out of your control, like you do have a parent that doesn't give a fuck, or um, maybe you're you're not supervised a good chunk of the day, or mm -hmm. maybe your parents get help from these other adults, and these other adults seem like trustworthy people, but they're not. Or even, um, or even like, what if you're like the oldest kid in your family, or yeah. like not even necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be the oldest kid all the time what if you're the kid in your family that is known as like mature for your age and people yeah. say that to you in like a nice way so you want to seem like that all the time that's that's nothing that you haven't done anything wrong to kind of be in that position in your family but that is something that someone can say some take something that someone has said to you as like a positive and kind of twist it around and make it into something that can hurt you yeah um and i think percy jackson is such a good example of groomers liking to use people in a vulnerable position mm -hmm. because that's what luke does with percy early on and it doesn't work thankfully but we see luke meeting percy after literally one of the worst traumas he could have gone through this kid thinks he lost his mom Mm -hmm. um and suddenly you know is getting pursued by monsters and finds out he has been his entire life this kid is vulnerable and so luke a person who has ulterior motives latches onto him and is like i'm gonna show you around because he's put himself he's gotten himself to this trusted position where he is the type of person who's considered a camp leader mm -hmm. and then he uses that influence he has over Percy to be like, let me hold your hand and teach you about this world. Oh, you're going on a quest. You don't want to take me. That's fine. Let me give you these gifts. Let me give you advice. Um, you know, and so he he's constantly trying to give that in, trying to let Percy know, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I will be there for you. You want to be you want me on your side, but his motive is to eventually use per Percy for the prophecy. Yep. Yeah, and to be fair, he even uses like Annabeth to be mm -hmm. like, I'm a nice guy because everybody likes and respects Annabeth and I call her my sister. Um, mm -hmm. He's honestly like worse with that in strangely in the book than he is on the show. Even like in, on, in the book, he like asks Percy many times like oh did you try the shoes on do they fit mm -hmm. and stuff like that and Percy just lies to him and is like yeah they're great <laughs> he, yeah. he thinks like oh this person's my friend I don't want to tell him that I gave his shoes to Grover instead and he like when they get to like Las Vegas he tries to tell him not to trust Annabeth mm -hmm. it's just like crazy <laughs> that that Luke would be like oh she's my sister she's the best four days later don't trust her though yeah like, come to me with the, your problems instead and it's just yeah and it, also i you don't know about calypso but calypso is also another like girl <laughs> example of that happening in the story it's not as blatant but mm -hmm. when you know what the signs of grooming are and you look at the stuff that she does with percy and then successfully with leo later on she's it's the same tactics. <laughs> it's a completely, it's a different way of doing it because she's a girl mm -hmm. and using like different 
things than she would like somebody like Luke, but it's generally the same idea. Yeah. So, I mean, some some things that you definitely want to look out for if you're a teenager are people trying to make themselves invaluable to you. Like, you know, they are the only person that can be that. And that's that's essentially what Luke was trying to do with all of that is I am your guide to being a demigod. I am your guide to finishing this quest. So come to me and me only. Yeah, like basically isolation in some way of where they try to get you alone. And even if they have like a reason for it, it's one of those things of if you're not sure, just telling, just mentioning what you're doing with that person to somebody else and then telling them about it is almost like a test that you can do. Because if there's nothing wrong, then there's no reason why they would be upset. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, nobody gets upset if you have more than one friend. Yeah. <laughs> like, we both have other friends. And when I mention those people, you're not like, who are you talking to? You're not allowed to speak to people like other people besides, no, that would never, like, that, that wouldn't happen. And so that's like, a good way to look at it is like Luke tries to get Percy to not trust Annabeth when he realizes that Percy and Annabeth are getting along and becoming friends in a way that he can't control. And mm -hmm. it, like and like Calyp the Calypso version of that is that when Percy is on that well, hers is a little more complicated because she's lying to him like from the very beginning, like making it look like he's doing something that he's not. But um, but even just from his own perspective, she is talking about the idea of leaving and like going back to everybody else as if it's a bad thing and is like saying to him like oh you can just like stay here with me and you don't have to go back and those people are so horrible because they're making you go back and he's like i want to go back though like i want to go back and see my friends and my mom like i don't want to stay here forever but she's trying to almost like trash talk them in a way to like make it easier for him to justify staying so that she'll he'll stay with her. And it, she does the same thing with Leo in like later books. She tells Leo that that Percy promised that he would that he would free her from her island and he didn't. And so Leo goes back and like starts a fight with Percy and yells at him and he yells at Jason and starts all these fights with the kids that he's like friends with thinking that he's like defending her honor or something. Um, she lied. <laughs> Percy never, never, never like promised to get her off of her island. He promised that he would plant a garden in her honor mm -hmm. in Manhattan. And then he tried to get her off of her island anyway, because he's a good person, but he never promised to do that. And he did actually get them to agree to do it. They just didn't follow through with it because they're the gods and they do what they want. But that's not his fault. And but either way, he never promised her. And so when she said that to Leo, she straight up lied to his face mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't like his friends. Yeah. And would do the things that he does later on to save her. Mm -hmm. And groomers love doing that. They love isolating mm -hmm. you from people who see their bullshit, especially. <laughs> um, they'll be like, oh, this person's on to me better get them out of the circle of influence, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, like, that is definitely red flag behavior, um, especially if it's somebody that's older and wiser than you, they shouldn't be so possessive. They shouldn't be so weird about your friendship. Yeah, and I guess one thing I could say to that too is, I feel like sometimes when people talk about isolation, they picture somebody who like never leaves the house and never goes anywhere and never does anything but it can just be like mental isolation where mm -hmm. you find yourself not telling people about things or acting in behaviors that are different from how you normally would. Like, like one of the things that one of the million reasons why I think my dad got away with absolutely everything he ever did to me is because I was out there in like the world. Like he had me doing soccer and softball and every other sport he put me in. And there were other things that I did, like I did, I went to dance class, I did like piano lessons, like I went to school every day. And so like on the outside, it looks like I'm this active person, 
being a part of society and around other kids, but like nobody knew what was going on inside my own head all the time. And so I would be at school around everyone else, surrounded by mandatory reporters every single day, thinking about the stuff that he was doing and thinking, I can't tell anybody about this though. And I would just think I would go in cycles about that <laughs> like all the time and would never tell them anything. And so even though I was around people all the time, he still kept me isolated from everybody else because I felt like I couldn't trust anybody else, that I couldn't tell them what he was doing and that it wouldn't work. Yeah, um, which, you know, like that's a scary situation when it's a parent because um, I know I tell my son, if, if anybody tells you to keep a secret from me, that is a red flag of a person. Like, do not, never it's ever. Like but ever. when it is your parent, like, oof, like, yeah and i mean you're more of a person to talk to i i know both of us want to present ourselves as people that kids can come to that are safe um there are adults that are safe to talk to it's not you know every single interaction with an adult is going to be unsafe but if any of us start if me or shannon were to say don't talk to that friend um you can't tell anybody about our conversations any of that immediately block us <laughs> like, yeah yeah, like if anything, I guess that's like a good example to show like people who are being like almost good face value and people who aren't where like mm -hmm. there's been kids that have like left comments on my videos before that are like people that I see often that have asked me to start like a discord and I absolutely refuse to do it. Mm -hmm. I will never start a discord ever. I would rather like die than do that because there are so many every single fucking story i've ever heard in the history of ever in the last five years about kids being groomed has started in a freaking discord because you can start a private channel with anybody and start talking with like talking like your voice where there's no way to like record what you're even saying and yeah. so i will never use a discord ever i started an email address because that is easy to like track and it's easy for somebody to like look and see every single thing I've ever said to somebody because you can't really delete it the same way. And yeah. that's the only way I can imagine doing something like that because that's like the safest way to do it. Like if, because I would never want, I would rather die honestly than ever like make a kid feel like they're being taken advantage of by me. And I would rather die than make an environment where that could possibly even happen. And so that's like really the difference is like you can tell when people have like taken the time to think about it and are like, OK, I'm going to do this thing, but I'm going to put so many rules in place that it's going to be like physically impossible for any bad things to happen here, as opposed to people that like take advantage of the fact that they kind of have free reign to communicate with whoever they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I don't like the idea of either of us ever setting up something where we're having private conversations like that because people do disclose things to you especially with your content that are very private and that is okay we don't want to discourage anybody like because if you have nobody having an adult who's been through it helps mm -hmm. um but at the same time know that like if either of us is having a conversation with you it's never so private that you can't screenshot it and post it somewhere like really? it's never so private that you can't call us out on on something that we're doing um which really? is how we try to keep different from that like the way that i put that is like this is definitely something that is was a negative in my life with my dad growing up that now i've kind of made into a, like a kind of strange positive, <laughs> which yeah. is that when I was younger, when I lived with like my dad and my sister, I didn't have any privacy and they would just read my journal mm -hmm. um, and just read it. And so i never wrote anything down unless I, I own the only things that I wrote down were things that I thought that they would be okay with reading. And so I never actually wrote down anything of what mm -hmm. I actually thought about either one of them. There was like one time that I did about my dad and I was like in a panic by the time I got home from school or work that day that I ended up like ripping up the pages in the journal and throwing them in the garbage and throwing a bunch of garbage on top of that garbage so that nobody could possibly ever sleep. If I had like a fireplace, I would have burned it <laughs> because I was so afraid that he would see it. And so the way that I make that like a positive now is that I don't say anything to any of the kids that message me like 
and I have had people message me um, in the last couple months, I don't say anything to those kids that I wouldn't be okay with them showing to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I like sit there and think about what I'm going to say for a while before I say anything at all, because I, because it's just important. Like they're, they're a child. <laughs> it's, yeah. well, I don't know. The way that I always look at this stuff is why it bothers me about how often this kind of stuff happens with adults is that to me, I'm like, I'm the adult here. Mm -hmm. Like it is my responsibility to guide this conversation and be aware of all the different ways that this could go badly because they are the child, I am the adult. Like their feelings are the thing that is the most important, not mine. Yeah. And so if you, all you have to do is prioritize the kid's feelings and then you won't do anything that hurts them because you will think about what you would say to them that might hurt their feelings before you say it. Exactly. And it's just like, it's always shocking to me how hard that is for people to understand. <laughs> just don't get it. Yeah, and I haven't had as many conversations with like minors in my comments and stuff since I would say since the days when I was doing a lot more emotional incest content, because yeah. I was getting some teenagers who were like, I'm in this situation with a family member right now where we have a no boundaries kind of relationship. And um, even back then, I would say that for the most part, if I could keep those conversations in the comments i would like and if you were going to dm me it would probably be the same policy that you had um because of the nature of the stuff i was disclosing wasn't as private as the stuff that you talk about is i i think why i didn't get as many dms from people that felt underage um but yeah like i mean even even knowing that i would handle a a DM from somebody who is very clearly underage is how adults should be thinking in these kind of situations. Like, yeah, like, I remember when we first became friends like three years ago, but we were still like just getting to know each other. I remember once I did, a, I think it was me responding to one of your videos about emotional incest stuff. And there was a kid, no, it was, a. I was talking about how, I was talking about how my mom stole money from me when I was in high school and that she was paying me back for it. And so I was talking about that sort of abuse that most people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And there was like a kid, like a 13, 14 year old kid in my comment section that was asking me, like, my dad is doing this kind of stuff. Like, what should I do? And a couple people responded to them basically saying like, oh, tell them no. And I was like, you can't do that when you're a kid living in the house with your parents. And especially if you feel like if you do that, your parent will be able to pay rent or something. That's mm -hmm. not like, that's not really an option. And so I made a video to his comment and told him that once he liked the video, I would delete it. Um, just so his dad, like, you know, wouldn't see it or he wouldn't get in trouble or something. Mm -hmm. Something. Um, and so it's like, that's the kind of stuff that you should do when kids are asking you for help in a public place like that, because they want to be asking you in that way if they had anyone else to ask. Yeah. And sometimes we do get on kids FYPs or even just like they find us through searches from some of our trauma content. Mm -hmm. And um, both of us did not have an adult at home when we were teenagers going through some of the stuff that we were um so and also like i know on my end my kid isn't a teenager yet but he's fast approaching that and so i do realize that for a lot of these kids not having that safe place not having a parent they feel like they can talk to you and stuff it makes going through these things extra hard and we don't want to send the message with talking about grooming that you can never talk to an adult online mm -hmm. you know like that's not necessarily the case either but no. you should be looking out for, you know, do these conversations make me feel uncomfortable? Do I, are these the kinds of things that I could show somebody and they'd be like, oh, that is a normal interaction, you know? Yeah. And like, this may be my autism, but, <laughs> um, but like the way that I figure that stuff out, at least for me is like running, like almost like an experiment mm -hmm. of like trying something out and then seeing how that person responds if they respond in a way that isn't like inflammatory or a way that like makes you upset then they're probably a fine person to talk to and there's nothing wrong with kind of doing those little things to like test the waters to see like i want any kid that ever talks to me to put me through every single test they can ever possibly think of 
I would be fine with that because there is no problem with that. Like, I want you to be comfortable with me. Why would I get upset with you? If you want to make sure that you feel safe with me, that's just obvious to me that that's what you would want to do. Yeah. I mean, we're probably similar to therapists in that a conversation that somebody has with us is only ever going to like, you know, it goes from public. there to there and then it ends. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's it. Well, yeah, I like it has a specific goal, but also like we're only going to tell people that you disclose something to us if it's you're in danger. You know, we don't we also don't want it to be like, oh, we don't keep secrets for you. You know, if if someone needs to talk to us and they're going through something, they can. Um, yeah. And yeah. honestly, like the whole like danger thing, I'm I, I get that this is not what most people think, but one of my like general rules, even with like the worst sort of abuse, is that I am never going to tell anyone about anything that a kid tells me about unless they tell me that they're okay with it first. Mm -hmm. And even if that means that they're around that person for much longer, I know what that feels like to feel afraid that like somebody is going to tell on you. You're never going to trust them. That was my whole thing for most of my life was that I didn't tell anyone anything because I was afraid that they would say something before I was ready. And, and that's like the, honestly, it's the worst way to ever try to help a kid is by forcing them to go through that stuff because it, they're just going to get mad at you. Yeah. They're going to, they're not going to like see what's really happening because you're, you're traumatizing them. You're forcing them to go through something that they're not ready for. And even if they're in a horrible environment, it's worth it to take the time to make them feel comfortable with what you're what you want to do instead of just being like this is this is just for the best for you and i'm just going to do this anyway because then you're just like everybody else around them and you're forcing them to do something they're not ready for and i just refuse to do that and i that's what will make me never be a therapist ever <laughs> because yeah. that's definitely not what they do but that's just my own thing because of what how that went with me if somebody like was willing to listen to me and talk to and listen to me say things without me being afraid that they were about to like get my dad arrested, I might have actually told them anything at all about what was happening instead of telling them nothing. Well, and I'm sure you'd even be able to help people navigate themselves towards a safer situation mm -hmm. without like raising the alarms of you gotta tell an adult right now, you gotta, you gotta do this. Um, <laughs> this is like off off topic, but I remember when Roe versus Wade was overturned, mm -hmm. I kept making all of these videos being like, you guys are stupid. And here's a list as to how stupid you are, because you keep posting things publicly that will be used against anyone you want to help later on. So I need you to shut the fuck up and yeah. stop talking about these things publicly. And I was like, literally, like, may I still have this in my brain, like a list of like, if some kid came to me and needed help getting that done because it's still not legal in the state that I live in. I know exactly what I would have to do to get it to happen and I would do it. But I know if all those things to do because I'm used to having to hide everything from everyone around me. And it was, I was like, oh, this is actually coming in handy for like the only time in my life <laughs> that is coming in handy that I'm so paranoid that I grew up so paranoid about having to hide everything about everything that I know exactly how to handle this stuff. And so it's one of those things of like, if you're not sure of how to handle that stuff, just ask, ask someone, ask, ask someone like us what to do, who's like had to grow up in that sort of environment and we can help give you tips instead of doing things that just make the situation worse. Yeah, um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else we can bring up about the grooming topic. Um, well, one thing is, Des there's always the the general thing of like desensitizing minors to topics that are like more adult mm -hmm. that they shouldn't necessarily be hearing about um or like telling them secrets telling them things in a way of being like i'm I am telling you this thing that other people are keeping from you because they don't trust you, but I do. Like the um, the way that I think about that with like Calypso and Percy Jackson is when the whole way of that happens is when he ends up on her island, mm -hmm. he's really messed up like health wise. 
and he like can't like do anything for a while when he's there so he, he doesn't really know what's going on for the first while that he's there but once he's able to like walk around and talk to her and stuff he's like wanting to leave and the other gods and stuff that check on him are talking to him as if he's told them that he wants to stay and he's like I don't want to stay here. I want to go back home. And it's like, he doesn't know what's going on because he's 14 and he's a kid and he just doesn't think about it much farther than that. Um, yeah. But when he's talking about wanting to leave or saying that he, he got the okay that he can leave, um, Calypso is like, oh, they didn't want me to tell you that like to offer you like that you could stay here with me forever and that you could just stay here with me and never leave and would just be immortal with me and you and you wouldn't have to be the prophecy kid anymore and she's saying it in a way of like they're keep they're tr they're trying to keep this secret from you but i'm telling you the truth and it, he's like i want to go back home anyway <laughs> like cause that's because he's he's percy like he's like oh and he like and the crazy thing that happens in that circumstance that happens a lot in like inappropriate conversations with minors is where the minor is like starting to like console the adult and their feelings like my whole rant earlier about how kids feelings should be the priority is the opposite of that where mm -hmm. percy is like consoling her about the fact that he's leaving to go back to his friends when she just tried to lie to him to get him to stay and abandon everyone that he loves so that she can i guess have sex with a 14 year old boy <laughs> okay what and he's like i feel really bad about calypso and i'm so i feel so sad that that she apparently loves me and and that because she tells him that too and and that she's so sad that i'm leaving but i want to see my mom and my friends again i'm just like like me now reading that i'm just like oh my god and that's the kind of stuff that is successful with Leo later on is she does very similar things, like I said, of like making him think that Percy, you know, forgot about her. And Leo, I'm not exaggerating, literally blows himself up to save her. He literally, like people think he's dead mm -hmm. for many months. And the only reason he does that is to save, to get back to Calypso's island. Cause they, you know, the only way they can get there is if they're like in a life or death sort of situation. And so he literally blows himself up when he doesn't have to just to try to get to her island for the second time. And she doesn't even like him that much when he like shows up there the first time. She doesn't even talk to him. She hates him. She's like, go away. I don't want to talk to you. She doesn't start talking to him until she finds out that he's good with like mechanical things because he's an Hephaestus kid and can like help build something to get her off of the island. Then she starts being nice to him. <sighs> But up until that point, she won't she won't even talk to him. He's just like alone in a tent. And every time she sees him, he she starts yelling at him and tells and is telling him to leave her alone. Yeah. And she's like, I'm just sad because Percy abandoned me. And I'm like, no, you're just a horrible bitch. <laughs> like you're yelling at a child. He's, he's 15. You're yelling at a 15 year old kid because he like almost died and ended up on your island to the point that he literally gives up his entire life. Like Leo lives in in Indianapolis in the books that are happening to stay here I want to go back home and it's like he doesn't know what's going on because he's 14 and he's a kid and he just doesn't think about it much farther than that um yeah. but when he's talking about wanting to leave or saying that he, he got the okay that he can leave um Calypso is like oh they didn't want me to tell you that like to offer you like that you could stay here with me forever and that you could just stay here with me and never leave and would just be immortal with me and you and you wouldn't have to be the prophecy kid anymore and she's saying it in a way of like they're keep they're tr they're trying to keep this secret from you but i'm telling you the truth and it, he's like i want to go back home anyway <laughs> like cause that's because he's he's percy like he's like oh and he like and the crazy thing that happens in that circumstance that happens a lot in like inappropriate conversations with minors is where the minor is like starting to like console the adult and their feelings like my whole rant earlier about how kids feelings should be the priority is the opposite of that where mm -hmm. Percy is like consoling her about the fact that he's leaving to go back to his friends when she just tried to lie to him to get him to stay and abandon everyone that he loves 
so that she can, I guess, have sex with a 14 year old boy. <laughs> okay, what? And he's like, I feel really bad about Calypso. And I'm so, I feel so sad that, that she apparently loves me. And, and that because she tells him that too and and that she's so sad that i'm leaving but i want to see my mom and my friends again i'm just like like me now reading that i'm just like oh my god and that's the kind of stuff that is successful with leo later on is she does very similar things like i said of like making him think that percy you know forgot about her and leo i'm not exaggerating literally blows himself up to save her he literally like people think he's dead mm -hmm. for many months and the only reason he does that is to save to get back to calypso's island because they you know the only way they can get there is if they're like in a life or death sort of situation and so he literally blows himself up when he doesn't have to just to try to get to her island for the second time and she doesn't even like him that much when he like shows up there the first time she doesn't even talk to him she hates him. She's like, go away. I don't want to talk to you. She doesn't start talking to him until she finds out that he's good with like mechanical things because he's an Hephaestus kid and can like help build something to get her off of the island. Then she starts being nice to him. Ugh. But up until that point, she won't she won't even talk to him. He's just like alone in a tent. And every time she sees him, he she starts yelling at him and tells and is telling him to leave her alone. And yeah. she's like, I'm just sad because Percy abandoned me. And I'm like, no, you're just a horrible bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're yelling at a child. He's 15. You're yelling at a 15-year-old kid because he, like, almost died and ended up on your island to the point that he literally gives up his entire life. Like, Leo lives in, in Indianapolis in the books that are happening right now. Mm -hmm. He lived literally in the middle of the country so far away from everyone else. Like, Percy and Annabeth are going to be in... California soon. Other new, uh, the other friends he has are in California. The other ones are all in New York. And so he's like, literal like giant states away from everybody just alone with her. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> this, this is great. And that's an, um, oh my God. I'm like taking a deep breath because there's so much to say about that when it comes to Luke. Um, mm -hmm. And Selena, <sighs> um, because there's just so many horrible things that he does to her. And it makes me so angry to like even think about it. And like, I want them to show that to everyone on the show and like traumatize everybody because I feel like it's worth it. <laughs> um, but it is a situation that I feel like sometimes this gets like lost in stuff because you don't realize that selena is the mole that is like giving luke information until book five you know that there is one from the second book on but you don't know that it's her um but in sea of monster she's 13 and he is 20. <laughs> and he is making a 13 year old girl tell information about all the people that she loves and telling her that if she doesn't give him this information, he's going to kill more of them. And he knows that, um, and he goes to her as her as his mole, because he knows that she has a crush on him, mm -hmm. and, are, and is more willing to like do what he wants because she has a crush on him. And I'm like, I will stab you in this neck <laughs> that yeah. he like does he she's in seventh grade and he's tw he he's in she's in like seventh grade and he if he was in school would be a sophomore in college and he's going to her and getting her and making her do all this stuff making her carry all of this weight that like if she doesn't betray everyone she loves and tells him all the stuff that they're doing then they might all die and like she has to deal with that for all this time and without giving away spoilers for you, like it is horrible. Like it's absolutely horrendous what happens, what happens to her. It's so sad. It is one of the stories that makes people the most depressed when reading those books, what happens to her, because it's just so un, it's so unfair. And, but it is like a textbook grooming situation that he does that to her. And it's just like, yeah, this is fine. I'm just, he uses the fact that he's good looking. Mm -hmm. um, 
to keep to like keep her quiet and make her be like complicit in this horrible stuff that he's doing when she never when she would never ever do anything like that and makes it feel like she has to keep things a secret and all this horrible stuff that she's that he's forcing her to do and it's just yeah that's like and i guess that is a good example of how someone can be isolated and do things even when they're surrounded by other people Mm -hmm. because she's at camp the whole time that this stuff is going on yeah she's never alone necessarily she's around everybody else the whole time but he still is able to get to her and talk to her and force her to do these things that she would never never ever do um in a way that is like so unfair that just for his own benefit like in it i guess the thing with her that is always like stark i think with grooming is how they like use the information that they have and keep so many things from you like mm-hmm. that she has no idea what he's actually doing out there like in yeah. sea of monsters he's telling her to tell me what they're doing and if you do i won't kill more kids Meanwhile, he's like laughing about making Percy watch his two best friends get eaten by some monsters. And is like, I'm just gonna kill everybody. And yeah. is mad because he stopped, because Percy is forced to stop him from killing Clarice and then killing the rest of camp. Like, and all the other stuff that happens in the other books, like she doesn't know how horrible he actually is because the persona I'm sure that he shows her is a much nicer like persona like and ironic because andrew alvarez plays chris rodriguez he does that to chris rodriguez too Mm -hmm. he and to um so many there's other characters he does it to besides them but those are like the big ones that people remember is that he kind of presents himself as like this nice guy that's just like looking out for everybody else Mm -hmm. that they don't see what he's actually doing behind the scenes to people like Percy. And Percy, to his credit, doesn't want them to know all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It is really horrible. Like, do you want to, do you really want to come back to camp and be like, yeah, he tried to, he tried to have Annabeth and Grover get eaten in front of me before, like, before stabbing me to death. (laughs) Like, no, that's not something you really want to tell these kids that look up, look up to this person. Even if you yourself also are a kid, (laughs) which is, part of the isolation stuff that happens, even though he's not being groomed by Luke, it, it still puts him in this position of, I'm the only one who knows the truth. And so I don't want to be the one to ruin everything. Um, but it is that sort of way of, I guess, that's why like grooming is such a hard thing because even adults can be groomed or you can be groomed by people that aren't interested in you romantically. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in a romantic setting. And it's hard to know when somebody is doing that because there's no way for you to know what they're keeping secret from you. Mm-hmm. And that's like the main thing is like, once you realize that they're not being honest about who they really are, that's a complete then, like that's when you can realize like, oh, they were lying to me about this so to try to get me to do something that I normally wouldn't have done if I knew what was actually going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that's that's why it's so hard to like realize, that's why so many people realize after it's over, like, oh, no, this was grooming. This person knew what they were doing wasn't right. And they just like did it to me anyway. Yeah, I mean, a, a good another good example of like that happening in real life is Colleen Ballinger. And I mean, Gabby Hanna walked, so Colleen Ballinger can run and Colleen, Colleen got all of the smoke Gabby Hanna didn't get any for the way that she was grooming her fans. Um, she really should have, because my God, that was one of those people that when I watched Jesse Smiles like videos in 2021, when those came out was what, what made me like, be like, who is this person? And why have I heard her be mentioned in videos often on the last few years, but I don't really know who she is. Um, that was one of those things that I looked into and saw that she was like, in private like chats with like her 13 year old fans who were then going out and like harassing people that like Jesse that over things that they don't understand. Like um, that was just, 
actually something that's happening right now that's very similar to that is uh, Melanie Martinez situation. I don't know if you've seen any videos about no, that. I haven't. So I think she's a British singer. I just know of her name. I don't really know any much about her, yeah, but I've heard the name in 2017 when like the Me Too movement stuff was like starting somebody that is was a, a close friend of hers, like a best friend of hers, um, came forward about how she uh, sexually abused her mm -hmm. in some like capacity, whatever word she wanted to use for it. And when, and of course it exploded everywhere and her fans wanted to say that she was a liar. It was one of those situations where Melanie said like, oh, she never said no. And I was like, <laughs> that's the biggest, like, you've just given the whole game away by saying something like that. Um, and, but then later on, that girl was being interviewed by like the Daily Mail or something. And mm -hmm. she said that they asked her for like a date for when like it happened. And she was like, oh, I took this picture on my phone the day after it happened. And so she found the picture on her phone and then looked at the date and gave them the day before that. And so then, of course, her little like teenage fans looked up that date and saw that they like weren't in like the same state or something that day. And they're like, she's lying. And they like harassed her to the point that she like went completely off the Internet because they just like harassed her to the point she couldn't have a job anymore. They even hacked her OnlyFans account and it was OnlyFans was like the only way she could make a living for a while. And then she ruined that. She recently just like came came back on here the other day and made a video, which is why I'm saying all of this because she says all of this in that video but basically what happened was when she that picture was saved more than one time in her in her camera roll mm -hmm. and so she just like got the wrong date which is that's yeah that's gonna happen sometimes and after her fans were like you're lying about the date Melanie Martinez comes for, says like oh thank you to my fans for figuring out that this was all just a lie and it's like I thought you said a week ago that she never told you no but now but now you're saying that it was all just a lie and she made it all up Very and so it. it's and like the fans to this day some of them do not acknowledge that that those two statements do not make sense mm -hmm. and it, that whole situation is one like that where this girl's entire life has been destroyed because she just told people that somebody sexually abused her that is famous she didn't do anything wrong. And to this day, there there are teenagers that are trying to find a way to believe that this person that they idolized didn't do anything wrong because they like her music <laughs> and they have like a parasocial relationship with her. And that is like an intense level of grooming when a public figure of any sort is willing to let people like in their name destroy other people's lives. Mm -hmm. so that they can get away with what they're doing and they don't have to be held responsible for it. Like Cody Co did that by for many years with Tana and with anyone else. Like I didn't know that he was the one that started making videos with about Bethany, Bethany Beal and her I'll sister. I'll be honest, I liked the it's cringe series on Girl Defined, but I'm just a fundy hater, okay? I get it, but it's one of those things of like you found two girls that were like fundamentalist Christians, which is a cult. And mm -hmm. you were like, let me make fun of them in front of the entire internet as a man, as a straight man. Let me do some reaction videos making fun of two women that are stuck in a cult. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great idea, you fucking bitch. Like, no wonder why I never like looked up any of your videos. That's predatory in and of itself to like take and I guess he did similar things with other people in YouTube in the past where he would make fun of women, always women and be like, oh, aren't they so cringy and stupid? And it's like, why do people like you? <laughs> like, it's one of those things that people can like laugh about it, but they don't think about what they're actually doing a lot of the time. Um, yeah. But that is like a whole other level of like, a, if a public figure wants to use you, like their audience as some sort of like attack force, that's, that's never a good idea because like, why are they doing that? Like, you don't know if they're telling the truth. Yeah. You have to, like, all those young fans who defended Melanie Martinez back in the day, and even till now, at, at one point, they're going to have to deal with the fact that, 
they ruined somebody's life for at least seven years now um who did nothing wrong mm -hmm. and they're gonna have to deal with that and it's not it's like it is their fault but it's not their fault because somebody who had much more intelligence and was way more developmentally older than them who knew what they were doing used them that way so that they could get out of trouble mm -hmm. and it's just that's one kind of grooming that I see happen a lot online and it's so hard because I just want those kids to realize that they should never be they should never be put in that sort of a position like no public figure should ever use you to get out of anything that they've ever done wrong yeah no I could never imagine yeah I could never imagine asking anyone to do something like that for me yeah, for me, the, the Gabby Hanna situation is where my mind goes because I think even on my channel still, there is a video where I screen capped a bunch of fans reactions to the four hour video or the four hour phone call video. Oh, and God. a lot of them were saying things like, oh, Jesse keeps interrupting Gabby. Um, Jesse's doing this, Jesse's doing that, Jesse's manipulating here. Um, saying shit like that when that clearly wasn't what was happening on the phone call you know like literally everything that gabby was doing they were saying that jesse was doing mm -hmm. and the amount of delusion to go under to be like my 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 person is this good that like i'm going to darvo for them like how mm -hmm. does that happen and a lot of these people were the same ones that were on gabby hannah's um I think it was Patreon that she like she had fostered this fan base where she was going live on Patreon or something. And so all of the kids, the teenagers and possibly like young adults, 20 ish that were on there felt like they were literally her friends. Yeah. And that that's like the whole like seeker keeping thing. Of <laughs> they feel like I really know who this person is. Yeah. I'm actually friends with this very public, famous person that I idolize. I have a special relationship with them that other people don't. And so I feel like emboldened to go out there and like fight on behalf of her because nobody else understands. And I'm the only one who really knows who she is because she trusts me enough to tell me these things. Yeah. And it's like, that is a Nicholas Sparks book. Like book. That is, I hate Nicholas Sparks, but that is not like actual real life, like real life relationships, at least healthy relationships don't ask you to do things like that like i would never ask like if somebody was mad at me about something i would never ask you to like go out there and like say anything to them or whatever to like defend me like you've done that before because we're friends and i've done that for you before because we're friends but i'm not you would never ask me to do that like you would it would be like very uncomfortable to put somebody that you're friends with and that's even just friends and that's mm -hmm. sort of a situation where you're asking them to put themselves out there to defend you about something because then that puts makes them a part of it and so like what if what if they're like hiding some information from you and then you end up looking like a fucking fool like later on because you were defending this person that you thought was a good person and it becomes yeah. this horrible thing like that happens so often like right so much of like the Tana stuff right now with Cody and Jason Nash for that matter is that sort of a thing is that those guys had a lot of people that were also famous or well-known people around them that had a lot of power mm -hmm. and people just were like, well, they're around all these other people. So they must be the ones that is right. And Tana must be wrong. And now people are realizing like, oh, all those people around them were actually creeps. Yeah. And at least one of them is being sued in court for many years for like permanently damaging somebody physically. Mm -hmm. And it, so like, they're not actually trustworthy. So like the people that you used as a way to be like, oh, these people are trustworthy. You realize later on, they're not trustworthy at all. Yeah. So it's like, if somebody's asking you to do something that feels like you're not sure, or like you feel like you're putting yourself out there in a way that might hurt you later on, it's like, even if it's someone that you think is a really trustworthy person, you just never know. Mm -hmm. um, like my, this isn't like an aggressive example, but my dad's family all told me when I told them stuff, like I didn't think that he was capable of something like that. 
and they knew that he was obviously horrible and they knew that he was abusive but they all said the same thing i never thought that he was capable of doing something like that yeah. and because they didn't think he would go that far they didn't do more to like try to find out what was going on and stop anything because they didn't think that it would be that bad but it was that bad because they just assumed that he wouldn't do something like what he was doing and that's the kind of thing that can happen when people just kind of it's a very autistic thing to say because we don't like hierarchies but it's the whole like social hierarchy thing there's so much social hierarchy stuff that happens with manipulation and grooming that people kind of fall back on those hierarchies to get out of responsibility yeah well i have a lot of smoke for jason nash specifically because the fact that the moment tana turned 18 he just all of a sudden flipped from big like oh you're a girl that also shows up in david's videos to i'm going to hit on you i haven't watched the video where he supposedly tried to kiss her but like want to tana mentioned that she was a week 18 like I believe it. She's so young. Like she's 26. She just turned 26 like yeah. a week ago. I looked up her birthday cuz I was just like when the when is her birth what is happening? Just to like figure out how old she was. But yeah, she was born in 1998. And, and so Jason definitely was somebody who should have known better because he was already an old fucking man when Vine was going well, on. That's like honestly like a good example of some an adult that is like not a safe adult that is around mm -hmm. minors because why if that if Jason Nash is like 51 years old right now and I'm going off of that being his age one of the clips I saw I believe from like the H3 podcast mentioned how old he is now um, mm -hmm. and he's visibly obviously older just when you look at wow. his face um, anyway they said he was 51 if he was 51 then all this stuff was happening in like 10 years ago so he was 40. 41. I'm 39. I cannot fathom why me now would hang out in a hype house with a bunch of 18, 19, like 20, 21 year old kids. They're all like drinking and doing drugs and doing crazy things. And that I wouldn't be there trying to send them to the hospital so they don't all die and trying to help them stop like overusing all these crazy substances or stop doing all these crazy things like that David Dobrik was making them do that was hurting themselves when they were too drunk or high to realize what they were really doing. Mm -hmm. You're an adult in a house like that of, around a bunch of young people and you're just like seen as like their friend, even without like hitting on them on camera and being in videos that are still on his YouTube channel right now. You can just, you can go and find them all and look them up if you really want to. Like even beyond that, what are you doing there? Like when I think about like, the Percy Jackson like cast, I feel like their mother. Like when I think mm -hmm. about them, I think about them from the perspective of like mothering them as an additional parent. <laughs> yeah. That is how I see all of them. Like like any of those kids, even the oldest ones like Andrew and Charlie and stuff, they're only 20, they're babies. 20 year olds are still babies. And I'm 39, I'm two years younger than he was. Yeah. And so like, just from like the start, the fact that he was even there at all and was trying to leech off of these kids' success to try to like get whatever money he could off of these kids while also abusing them along the way until they realized what he what he was doing, I guess. Maybe just alone him being there is so suspicious. Yes. That it's just like anything else that happens after that, like I don't need Tana or anyone else to ever like give me like evidence. I'm like, he was there with you in that house that is the biggest red flag in the entire world <laughs> yeah i mean we've talked about how we will talk to our teenage fans but we're not gonna hang out with you <laughs> like no. Don't, no offense but we're not gonna hang out with you guys um i i like, think we want to we want to help you as, in like a parental way of exactly. like help like guide you through things that maybe you feel like you can't talk to your parents about or it feels weird to talk to your parents about it or to like be able to use Percy Jackson as something to help explain things to you that is hard for people to understand. Because like I said, a lot of times people don't explain things to kids. They like talk down to them. Mm -hmm. And using this kind of thing as a way to explain this stuff to kids in a way that helps them understand where you're not like talking to them as if you know better than them or something. 
that's yeah. like the general idea not like in a way of like yeah i want to be like your best friend and i want you to like give me a bunch of money that i can build my career off of oh my gosh that is the most embarrassing part of the jason nash saga and then he wasted all of the money and now is just on TikTok live every day <laughs> trying to get money for more children because yeah. he wasted it all on stupid stuff that doesn't matter it's <sighs> unbelievable like what gets me about teenagers these days is because William is 11, my son is 11, that like my son is closer in age to most of these teenagers than I am. So like the idea of hanging out with a teenager, I did actually hang out with a teenager recently, but it was someone's little sister that she brought along to the hangout. And the entire time I'm just like, Okay, what are what are age appropriate things I can talk about? Like, how, how do I tailor this conversation a little bit better? Um, because it should it shouldn't be natural for people our age to be around unrelated teenagers. No, absolutely yeah. not. Even like traumatized teenagers, those are the ones that I usually end up talking to. Mm -hmm. Are they're still like teenagers? They're still much younger than me, and yeah. so I'm talking to them as like an adult and thinking a lot about what I'm saying to them. I'm not like talking to them in like a peer way. Like I'm not using like teen slang mm -hmm. and things like that because that's not for me, that's for you. That has nothing to do with me. It would be stupid. I would be that one meme. I like, <laughs> I like want to quote, <laughs> this is such like an age thing, but it's so funny to me that I still remember the dad from 10 Things I Hate About You. Mm -hmm. where he's like what's i'm i'm down i got the 411 you're always watching that dawson's river show where kids are even sleeping in each other's beds i haven't watched that movie since heath ledger died yeah. <laughs> i still remember that because i like that movie so much but that's what it would come across as in the absolute best way is an out of touch like adult and that's like the best case scenario of that sort of setup but that's not at all that's not at all what us or like anyone who's like a safe adult will be wanting to do they don't yeah. want to like i guess a lot of grooming is like using the closeness or whatever closeness vulnerability whatever that you have with a person to like weaponize it in some way mm -hmm. like my dad like used the stuff that he did to me as a way to control me of mm -hmm. like you can't tell other people about this because they'll think you're a bad person and and they won't believe you. And I was afraid of the police. So I'm pretty sure that he told me that they would arrest me or something. Like I used to be afraid, like up until I was like 27, I was afraid that the police were going to arrest me at any any day. I, like I wouldn't want to walk by the police station because yeah. I was convinced that they were going to arrest me. <laughs> For what? <laughs> like, I don't know, but that's something that, that like people like me actually, that's like a similar thing that a lot of us experience of being afraid of the police. Um, because they say things like that and so even just like um people like the social media people like gabby hannah when she was definitely like she tried to backtrack a lot when 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 one of her younger fans reached out to jesse smiles and showed her the conversation they had mm -hmm. and she tried to say like oh jesse is being like a creepy weirdo by posting this online but it's like, no, you're the weirdo because you're the one who like messaged this 15 year old fan out of nowhere and just started talking to her. Mm -hmm. That would be absolutely crazy to do to somebody. And, and so like, that's, she was using the like, some sort of parasocial closeness that sh this person felt about her to get something out of them. Yeah. Like, if there's an adult around that is like a good person, they're not gonna do that. Like yeah. any of any of the kids that ever has messaged messaged me before, I am just glad to talk to them. But I'm not use I'm not like leveraging their communications to get to get something out of them. No. I'm, I'm just glad to talk to them, and that's like where that ends. I don't need something else besides that. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and um, like. I'm trying to think. I had a thought about Gabby Hanna, but I just dropped it. Um, By the way, she showed up as like a jump scare 
Yesterday, oh, yeah. after, after like Biden stepped down, the craziest videos were on my FYP. Like I was like, who are any of these people? I don't, I've never seen any of their videos before. She showed up literally yelling about Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's still on her spiritual psychosis stuff, it looks like. Um, yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> That's a whole other issue. But um, yeah, I think with yeah. her, she was particularly one. There are some people that are like famous people that use the like closeness that they are trying to like exploit basically with their fans to make those people feel like they're on this like journey together that no one else is. Mm -hmm. And to like make them go after people that they just don't like. Like a lot of the stuff that those kids were doing to Jesse Smiles was because they thought that they were in the right. Yeah. And Gabby knew that they were, she was 100% wrong. Like well, she, I mean, she knew. <laughs> but the she undercover just... thing that happened because of that, that didn't get a lot of publicity, was they shamed one of Jesse's old Vine friends off the internet. Yeah. Completely. So Jen Dent used yeah, to yeah. do Vine stuff with, um, with Jesse, they had a few collabs on YouTube and stuff, but Jen was like older and became friends with some of these fighters, which is also questionable. Uh, but Jen was going to bat for um, for Jesse on the whole Curtis Connor situation online mm -hmm. for years in the background. Wait, and wait. so Absolutely. these people, Connor. huh? Curtis Connor? Sorry, not Curtis Connor. Um, <laughs> Moore. <laughs> Wrong person. Wrong Curtis. Curtis yeah, I don't even because I don't look at. I block all of his social medias the moment I get on a new social network. Um, so Curtis Connor is in my mind more than Curtis Lepore yeah. because oh I actually. Oh my god! Let's not actually call him a rapist. No. Wrong, yeah. wrong Curtis. Wrong Curtis. Um, Curtis Lepore. So when that stuff would come up and when Gabby and the end of Jesse's friendship would come up out of nowhere, before we all knew all of this, before the four hour phone call, Jen Dent was online, you know, like defending Gabby, yeah, or, yeah. No, sorry, defending Jesse. And so all of Gabby's fan, uh, fans attacked her to the point where she left Twitter. And I'm pretty sure one of Gabby Hanna's fans still has her old Twitter handle because they, they harassed her off Twitter and then stole her handle. Um, and she just barely started posting again on Instagram, but like not they, meant to be huge public. They accused her of being a, yeah, uh, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, and there is no way that Gabby didn't know that that was a total and complete lie. And that made me really like violently angry inside my own head. It makes me so mad when people bring that word up when they know that they're just talking shit or they don't even know if what they're saying is right because you're just weaponizing that word to use it to get what you want so you should just stop using it then because yeah you're making a mockery out See, of but what happened was there were fans already harassing jen and so when that random account, um, cause Jesse did talk about that in her, one of her videos, but some random account then was like, oh, well I have allegations on Jen Dent and here's what happened. And so all of the fans who were already attacking her latched onto that and ran with it. Um, and yeah, so it, it was back and forth ugly, I will say. Jen probably hit lower than she should have hit with some of these teenagers, but they were relentlessly harassing her yeah. um, on Gabby's behalf. Like, always saying it was on Gabby's behalf. Always, you know, like all of them had Gabby in their profile pictures. Mm -hmm. Gabby followed this account on Twitter on this day in their bio. Like, there wasn't a single one that you couldn't connect back to probably Gabby's Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, from my perspective, too, as as someone who has gone massively viral before, it's very easy for people to get parasocial with you. Like there there's times where if I post about my mom and I post the wrong thing, people will get up in arms for me or on my behalf or, you know, like if I'm not upset about something, they'll they'll like try to make me upset about something because they feel so involved with my situation with my mom because of how much I've shared. Um, and 
I know I've told you this story. I had one person that was sort of, I don't want to call them a fan because like, I don't consider myself someone famous enough to have fans, mm -hmm. but they had followed me since I blew up with my emotional incest content. Um, when I used to do lives about Gilmore Girls, they were um, one of the people that would help me block, you know, like things in the discussion that kind of derailed it and moderated them a little bit for me here and there. Um, but then randomly one day when I had stopped making as much content on my mom, they went back to a post that was two years old and started arguing with people in the comments, like mm -hmm. on my behalf. And I remember, um, cause I saw someone was starting to reply to one of their two year old comments that randomly got argued with. I was like, look, I'm super sorry. I don't know why this is happening. Let me talk to them. I talked to the person and they were like, oh, well, I don't see these conversations as having a beginning and an end. So I just went for it. It's just like, no, that's weird. I'm going to block you now. Bye. And, and that person followed me for a while too, mm -hmm. because she, because you would mention me sometimes in those videos, mm -hmm. and, but they stopped following me a while before that because I did one of the videos I used to do where I would mention how the narcissistic abuse community is horrible <laughs> and and it just makes people get stuck. It was one of those videos where I saw someone say that people with NPD should like be stuck in like a zoo mm -hmm. where they can't talk to people. And I was just like, oh my God. And so like you should, that's a person you're talking about that's that no, that's no, no. And um, they were like arguing with me in the comments, but it was a situation where I could tell that I knew that I was right. Yeah. And, and it was one of those situations, like I know that I'm right about this. And so they kept, they kept trying to argue with me to find a way for them to be right because they didn't want to admit that they were like wrong about this sort of thing that no, you shouldn't talk about people with personality disorders as if they're monsters. That's mm -hmm. obviously not going to help anyone ever. And what I don't see a point of like demonizing those people. And it was one of those situations where they kept arguing with me and I could tell when they were arguing with me, they were just trying to find a way for them to be right instead of admitting that I was. And mm -hmm. I just got tired of them doing that for a while and they would not stop like responding to me. So I just deleted all of their comments. Yeah. And that's like essentially what I do when I feel like somebody isn't listening to me and isn't willing to even listen to what I'm saying, I'm just going to delete all their comments until they, and I'm, every time they leave another comment, I'm just going to delete another one until they stop, until they stop, because I want to give them the chance to like calm down and realize and like think later and like come back. Um, but at, after that interaction, I think she, that person like unfollowed me because I didn't see them anymore unless they were like leaving comments on your videos. <laughs> Yeah. And, but if that is like a thing of like, it's a good, ex like that person felt like she could sit there and argue with both of us about things about in trauma and recovery and all this stuff. And it's like, you don't know me. Mm -hmm. I, you only the, the only things that people know about me are the videos that I choose to post. And I only choose to post about the things that I want to share with people. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't actually know me. Like, it's so funny to me um, for people to, like, look at, like, those, like, I did one of those compilation video things on, like, CapCut or whatever, where they took, like, a picture from every month. And if you, and I was like, if you look at these pictures, it makes it look like the first six months of this year was, like, so easy for me. They <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> had, like, no idea what was actually going on. It, like in my life like yeah if you watch my videos and all you see is me talking about percy jackson and you think that i'm like smart about it or whatever you're going to think that i'm this like amazing smart wonderful person but you have absolutely no idea about what's actually going on in my actual life and there's a lot more going on outside of that i just don't share it with you because i don't know you and that's like a whole thing of like i know that people see me as like this other version of me this mm -hmm. like parasocial weird like video avatar uh, version of me is what most of those people see and like it's possible to get to know somebody like mm -hmm. we got to know each other like that um it was like three years ago like right around this time when we started talking and it took like a while like 
it took like many months and still we started talking off of even TikTok. It took yeah. probably like a year or something after that. And so until we started telling each other things that we don't tell each other, like the public at large, you know, mm -hmm. it was a whole like process of getting to know each other to the point that, um, that we tell each other stuff that like the public doesn't know. Like I used to think that it was the funniest thing ever before we started doing our this that if people watched both of our videos, they would have no idea that we even knew each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we never mentioned each other. We never made videos about each other. We never even like reshared or whatever each other's videos a lot of the time. Because and but it's like, yeah, we were actually but we were actually really good friends behind the scenes the entire time. You just had no idea because you don't actually know us like that. And it's yeah. It's like a whole line of like, you can have, you can communicate with people who know you just offline and like have moments where they get to know the real you, mm -hmm. more, but you have to be so aware of what you're doing. Like we haven't really talked about this part of it yet, but one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the stuff with Andrew and the cast is because sometimes some of the, of the older cast members will do things that I'm not, I look at it and I'm like, I'm not sure this is a good idea. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, sometimes they'll like share like posts or whatever that fans have made on their stories or something, or they'll mm -hmm. follow like accounts of people and stuff. And it's just such a careful thing that you have to do to do that stuff. Because if you talk to the people who follow you because they idolize you because you're an actor, then at one point, you're probably gonna wanna like pull back from them because you don't want them to know everything about you. And it's like, how do you do that if you've talked to these people as if they're your friends? Mm -hmm. And like one thing that happened the beginning of this year was um, Dior posted a TikTok when they were at like Leah's house when they're getting together for the Super, like, Super Bowl weekend, when they all just happened to be in LA like right after the show was finished airing. And the video ended up getting taken down. And right afterwards, Walker and Leah's TikTok accounts were like down for like over a month. And mm -hmm. I can only assume that those two things were probably related. I don't know, obviously I don't know what they are, but I just kind of assumed that they were because if you make, if you're like showing the cast hanging out as friends, as if you're showing your friends and you talk to those people on your stories and stuff as if they're your friends they're gonna feel like your friends especially when they are also teenagers themselves they're gonna take you at face value because developmentally they don't understand the difference a lot of the time unless somebody mm -hmm. takes the time to like try to teach them about it and so i could see how people could start to leave comments on both of their profiles as if you're talking to like your friend but they're not which could have led to their accounts getting banned for like aggressive sort of language and things yeah. like that. And so it's one of those things of, I, I know that they work obviously for Disney. And so Disney is definitely gonna have like conversations with them about things like that. But it's just one thing to keep in mind from like the fan side too, that to like almost always be aware that like you don't really know these actors either. Mm -hmm. And to be like careful, about what you are willing to do to like kind of get in good graces with them because that's like the thing with like andrew talking to people that was why it was scary and still is yeah. is because you they know that they you know all these things about them they don't know anything about you and so you would be willing as the fan to do whatever to get attention from them and that can accelerate mm -hmm. into a very like not good place and if somebody is going through like a shitty time in their life or they're just like have a predisposition to like grooming or whatever they can sometimes use that stuff to get attention that they want if they feel like that's lacking in their own life um mm -hmm. and end up doing things that hurt you and you don't even realize that it's bad because you want that attention from those people yeah um, but it's also like a thing of like if would i ever talk to somebody else like this like if I was talking to a, another 20 year old that was just like a regular 20 year old, would I think that it was okay if a 20 year old was talking to me this way when I'm 14? Yeah. <laughs> like probably not. Ay, ay, ay.
Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what other tips we can give teenagers, particularly for going through this, because it is one of those things that like at the time it's happening, you feel the need to keep secret. And I think you touched on a little bit with the actual Percy Jackson story. Luke is able to groom the people that he grooms into being his moles by saying, oh, if you do this, I am not going to end up killing as many people as would have died or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that is a typical way that they'll keep you hooked, especially once you start to realize that they're not doing good things. Like they'll, they'll say, oh, but you know, like if, if you do this, your mom's going to get in trouble or like, um, you know, they'll threaten you, they'll threaten your family, they'll threaten your pets whatever it may be to try to mm -hmm. he, he, like reel you back in. Um, and that's definitely when your mind's already in the danger, but you're so numb to what's happening to you. Yeah, I guess the best thing about that is a lot of those people, it's hard for me to say this because of my own life circumstances, but a lot of those people don't actually have as much power Mm -hmm. as they say they do yeah a lot of those people are banking on the idea that you like won't test their theory by telling anyone else about the things that they're saying or how they're treating you mm -hmm. um and so a lot of the times those it's very hard in those situations to realize that because you're just scared and they have a lot of control over you mm -hmm. and so it's really hard to believe that they don't that they that they're lying and there's always this voice in the back of your head that's like but what if they're telling the truth um, but it is a thing, a lot of the time they, they can't actually control you all the time, no matter how much they make it seem like they will. And that outside of this dynamic, a lot of the time, other people will believe you or other people will look at the messages that they're sending and know that there's something wrong with it. Even if you don't, even if you're not sure, other people might be sure, more sure they might see something about them that you can't see yourself because you're stuck in that dynamic like you see adults even in situations like that in abusive relationships a lot that when you start to tell people like the littlest stuff is when they start to realize when they start to realize like oh something is wrong here yeah. <laughs> okay and the the main thing about this stuff that i always think about with kids is to just like reiterate the point that it's there's never a point where it's like you waited too long to say anything yeah I waited, oh my God. I mean, like, he was already dead by the time you started saying something. At least 20 years. Um, I, my, me and Math are not friends. So I at least, I waited at least 20, like somewhere between like 20 and like 25 years to say something. And that didn't change anything, obviously, besides how long time went on. But when it came to people believing me or not, um, that didn't change that actually. Like I've actually, never talked to somebody who knew my dad that was like, no, I thought he was a nice guy. Yeah. Literally never happened to me and it never will. And so <laughs> there's yeah. no, there's no one like that on this earth when it came to my dad, at least. And so I want to say that, but I also want to just reiterate the point for the 57 million time, but it's one of those things that I always feel like I need to repeat, especially for teenagers is that you're not actually mature for your age. Like mm -hmm. that is not a thing that is a lie yeah. like that is a, that person who's saying that to you is saying that to you to to like get something usually out of you whether it's your parents or your family or somebody trying to groom you or whatever like that is not something that's real like i get <sighs> some <laughs> sorry i watched this interview with charlie once where he said that he forgets how old walker is because he acts so much older than his age. And I was just like, no, 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 no. That is, that is a child. You, he is 15. He is a freshman in high school and you are 20. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, I really hope that there's somebody around them that reminds him, this is a child. Like, yeah. even if he is a mature child, because he is in a, in a huge position of like pressure and all that kind of stuff because of what he's doing, he is still a child. Yes. And you should definitely not be talking to him the way that you would to friends that are closer to your age. 
Yeah. And it's like, you can, like, the way that he would talk to Arian and Dior even should be different than how he talks to Leah and Walker because they are children. <laughs> they are so young that those, like, three years between Arian and, and Walker and Leah is a big developmental age time. Yeah. And so that's, like, the general thing that I just think of, of... Like, you're not actually that mature for your age. That's something that people say to you because usually because you've been through some stuff in your life that has, like, forced you to mature older than you your age actually is. But you're still developmentally, like, that age. Like, no, no matter how much horrible trauma you've gone through, and trust me, I've gone through, like, almost everything a person can go through. The only thing that didn't happen to me was getting trafficked. Everything else happened <laughs> and so yes. and and like some of that was happening when i was a teenager and a lot of times i think people didn't think that things were that bad because i acted like i was fine mm -hmm. um, because i just learned how to do that from a very young age you're not actually fine though yeah. and and like even when the, you're older than you should be like age-wise because you've been forced to you're still actually developmentally that age yes and so there's never a time when you're responsible if somebody takes advantage of you because you are that age. That's mm -hmm. their, that's always their fault. There's like literally no scenario anyone can ever give me where that is like the child's fault. It's, yeah. it's physically impossible. Exactly. Yeah. And like, I, I think also our experiences with the whole not this age concept are, um, well, first of all, both of us were probably told we were too, or we we were more mature than we should have been as teenagers. I don't feel like a real adult right now because I have no <laughs> self regulation because I had to be mature very young, and yeah. like both of us, we don't feel like real adults right now, um, mm -hmm. and we can say that because we had to be mature so young. Yeah, if you ever wonder like why adult like two adults are into Percy Jackson, it's because we're actually being kids. Yeah. Like, this is like the closest we can get to like enjoying like an innocence that we never ever had when we were actually kids um yeah. and it is like that like i can remember <laughs> i remember going to school when i was like eight or nine and i would talk to my teachers mm -hmm. instead of the peers that i had because i was like i don't i'm 40 in my own head <laughs> like yeah. i don't know how to talk to people my own age that are like talking about whatever I, there's like kids movies and stuff that i like missed when i was like a literal kid even because i just like didn't watch them because i felt like they were too childlike for me when i was a child <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> which is why as i get older i like looking into things like being interested in, in things like this because i didn't get any of that stuff when i was younger but that's like what happens when you're forced to grow up when you're way too young is like when then when you're older you're like trying to figure out who you are and also trying to like find that sort of happiness and mm -hmm. like innocence like inner child any any of those words that people say you're trying to find it somewhere else because like like i hate nostalgia because i don't actually like any of it like people are like oh i love i would love to go back to the 90s i was like i would rather die like yeah. you, you cannot make me do that i most of the nostalgia stuff is connected to horrible memories and so i don't like any of it um but with this stuff this is stuff that's happening here and now so i can just enjoy it for what it is and not okay. and it's not connected to anything in the bad times <laughs> um yeah. but that's like the kind of thing that can happen when you're a kid that's forced to go through that when you're younger then you end up in this sort of situation when you're older if so it's always a if it's possible for you to tell somebody what is going on it's always a good idea to tell someone even if they can't fix everything even if they can't like get you out of it just talking to another person about it so you're not holding it as this big secret all the time can be like really helpful in a way that maybe doesn't seem like it should but it really is yeah like it would have been i sometimes imagine like teenage me if I had like somebody during those years that would have like, I don't know, just noticed anything at all or like noticed enough to like ask me about it. Mm -hmm. It would have been so nice, uh, but 
it would have made my life a lot easier. It would still would have been very hard, but it would have been a lot nicer to have somebody, anybody like around me who knew what was going on. And then also said enough of it. Like a lot of my friends that I had in high school, they like try, but also didn't like, <laughs> I, I will never get over the friend of mine that I had in high school that told me that she didn't like the character of Harry Potter because she thought he was too mad about being abused. <laughs> And she said that to me and I was like, what do you mean? He's like too upset about, about having to go back to the Dursleys. And I could like literally see her face when she looked at me like, oh fuck. But, but it's yeah. like, how are you saying that to me? Like she knew enough about my family life to know what, how, what she was saying. But even somebody who was like one of my best friends was like, it's annoying that he's upset about the fact that he has an abusive family. And it was just like, what do you mean that that we're like annoying because we're upset about it? Like anger is a is like a normal reaction to something like that. You should be it's it's a problem if you're not angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so like it is it yeah. Anyway, I didn't have the internet like I did now. I was on it, but I didn't have access to it a lot. The computer was in my sister's room because she was the golden child. Definitely. And so I never got to use it unless, except for the times when she wasn't home. <laughs> um, and so I, I had friends online, but there was never enough conversation that way for me to like really tell them the stuff that was really going on um, because I just never had, and I knew that she would read anything that I said. And so it was, there was never like a time where I could do that. And so now that if we're gonna have like a positive from social media stuff, that is one positive that there are ways for teenagers to find people like that, if, as long as they find the right people. Yeah. And I guess the, the other thing I'll add on is never trust a predator hunter. A lot of the people who present themselves as like, oh, I'm gonna be the next Chris Hansen, it's not long before an allegation against them comes out too. If a kid ever came to us with some sort of grooming stuff, it's not going to get put on blast. It's it's not our goal to air things out that way. Like, you know, if someone's a public nuisance, maybe, maybe if it was multiple people coming to us and saying this person is, but never without anybody's per permission. And it would also be a thing of like, I've heard things about this person, kind of like with Andrew. Like, I don't even need to know for the Andrew Alvarez situation who he was talking to. It doesn't matter. It yeah. just, all that matters is that somebody said something about it. And it's just people being aware that that is something that could happen and to understand why that's not a good idea to happen. I don't need to know who it is because I'm not, I'm not a police officer. Yeah. I'm not investigating anything. I don't like any child, especially that comes to me with any sort of story of anything, I will quite literally believe you every single time. I'm not going to not believe you. Even if you're lying to me, I'm still going to believe you because- right. Better than the off chance that you're you're not lying and we're thinking you are. Yeah, I would much, like, what is that quote that people always say? But like, I would much rather believe that like, and protect like a victim than to like be protecting a predator. And so there's never, especially when it's a kid, I'm never going to need evidence or whatever from any kid about anything that's happening to them. Because even if it ends up not being as bad as what it seems or whatever, that would be fine. But I'm not going to like use that information against them later or call them a liar or mm -hmm. something like that. Because if any kid is coming to you like that anonymously online, it's because they don't have any other options for their in their actual life and they need help and they're reaching out to somebody because they don't have anyone else. Like, even if you're exaggerating a little bit, I would never turn anybody like that away because you obviously need help with something. Yeah. And no one else is helping you. And I can at least do it because I know all of this stuff way too well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm thinking some takeaways here for any teenagers that may be watching are just adults like us aren't aren't out here to be your besties and and any times that that feels like it's what's happening online, whether it be an online influencer or a Hollywood actually famous star. 
that shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be having these secret, private, you're so special to me conversations with them as a child with an adult. Um, mm -hmm. And any adults that you talk to online, like they should have a healthy level of boundaries with you, you know, like they should, they should have a healthy level of respect for who you are, your autonomy. Um, and yeah, um, try to think what else to throw in there. They should never, they sh there should be no problem with you telling like your parents or anyone else about what, about you talking to them. Mm -hmm. like if they're not, if they don't want you to do that, um, there isn't like a good reason for that really. Yeah. Like I will never have a private conversation with any child in a DMs that I don't think their parent is going to eventually see. Mm -hmm. And I will say as a parent myself, not enough parents are doing that. Not enough parents are checking back in on their kids. Mm -hmm. I literally just made an Apple ID for William for the first time. And you know, like when he goes to sleep, that's when I'm going to be looking at his iMessages, you know? Um, but up until before that, he's only had messenger kids, which is like Meta created a type of messenger app where you can't delete anything, you can't send links, um, and parents can review it all. Um, so he's literally just getting this freedom now where it's like, okay, you have your own accounts on some things that like I would need to physically get into your device to see, but I'm still going to be looking at it, you know? Yeah, like some of the kids that like a lot of my videos it's so sweet because some of them just like look at my profile mm -hmm. a lot and they'll have usernames like apple user number da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yep. or, or like whatever and i'm like oh that's so cute that you're like a little child probably like like 11 12 whatever year old kid and your parent doesn't know how to change like the default username <laughs> for yeah. TikTok, and so you just like look up my account because they probably aren't allowed to like like follow anybody and they just go back to my account like every day and then go through all of my videos and like all of them and it's just that's like the best way to do that kind of stuff um when you are that young to like be able to be online and communicate with people but in a like a very safe mm -hmm. um, safe way i guess like even <laughs> I was looking at baby, like young Percy's Instagram account. He's 10, <laughs> so young. Yeah. Um, his parents run his account and I was mm -hmm. looking at his like Q and A thing. And it, he has a brother who's autistic actually, who is an actor too. But um, his parents were the ones like typing out the answers. He was giving them the answers but they're the ones actually typing them out on his stories and giving the answers because they wouldn't even allow him to do that. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's exactly how that should go. When your kid is an actor, you should like keep all of that stuff away from them as long as possible. Yeah, with, with William, so he has an Instagram, but it's literally just family. <laughs> and um, it's only installed on my phone. He doesn't have his own Instagram app on, on his iPad. Um, he watches TikToks with me, but they're TikToks that I have pre-screened or very, very specific channels. Like we'll check adventures in our, in Aardia or however you say it every day for roll for sandwich. Like we'll oh, yeah. check back on the Monday, Wednesday, Fridays when he posts. So, um, you know, there's certain creators that like, I will watch with him knowing I trust these creators to post. And then there are things where he's never fully unsupervised on social media. Yet there are some of his peers who are posting on like YouTube and Instagram totally unsupervised. Um, so there's, there's also a lot of differences. There are people who will like exploit some of those differences, even if they notice that like you are a person that your parents aren't, watching out for you um so that is also something to be kind of aware of yeah yeah like my my mom or my mom was like not around enough purely because my mom oh my god when i was a teenager my mom worked like three different jobs because mm -hmm. my dad didn't give her any money <laughs> for child support he would give her like nothing he would be like it can't be this expensive to take care of kids <laughs> and so like he would have absolutely no problem 
with some random stranger talking to us online. He probably would get more mad about, like, don't talk to my daughters because I want to talk to them this way, like, instead of the actual way. But my mom wasn't home enough to, like, notice if any of that stuff was even happening. It, like, it wasn't, granted, but still, she wasn't home enough to notice it because she was working all the time. It wasn't the delineation between children's content and adult content that there is now, which thankfully does keep some kids safe, but we know that it doesn't keep all of them safe because some of you guys are on here lying about your age on TikTok so you can have an account, you know? I feel like we didn't touch as much in real life grooming, um, but it's kind of... <sighs> I don't know. It feels like it's not as connected as a, of a topic just because, you know, like at least in the books it is, but, um, in the fandom, you know, it's not a topic we touch on as much. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring in the example of Luke and you brought in the example of, Cal um, Calypso, mm -hmm. um, because grooming isn't just an online thing. It is something that can happen in real life. And honestly, that is like, that's the way that it's probably more likely to happen because you get more access. Um, you know, there's there's a lot more manipulation that can happen when you're face to face than when you're online. Yeah, and it can start in person and then move online yeah. or be both too. Um, it's just a lot harder to it's a lot harder to talk about that part of it because it's hard to know. It's one of those things like you don't know what somebody is lying about mm -hmm. until you get until you find out something that you didn't know already yeah um, and so it's like one of those hard things of especially because grooming can happen with anybody like um like a, a manager at work or a friend of yours mm -hmm. or anyone like that it doesn't have to be because they just want to groom you for like romance they can be grooming you for anything like um one thing that used to happen with me when i was growing up is that sometimes which is hard with like the autistic stuff is that we take people at face value and so we don't think about how they could be lying to us and even someone like me who didn't trust anybody would sometimes have these situations where I would go to church and have friends at church or at like a church camp that I went to sometimes and there would be somebody there that I thought was just being like nice to me but they're actually doing that thing where they were like making fun of me mm -hmm. to my face and I didn't realize and then other people around me would like get mad at them on behalf of me and I would have no idea that any of this was going on and yeah. it was like a weird sort of grooming thing where they were almost like grooming me to be like their punching bag and mm -hmm. to like make fun of me to my face as a way to make them feel better about themselves and I didn't know that that was it took f forever <laughs> for me to like like years later looking back at that stuff and realize what was actually going on and like some of that stuff happened when I was in middle school, like I noticed that kids would make fun of me as a way to like get in with other people, because I was yeah. one of the most unpopular kids at school. Um, and so I recognized that that's what that was in a weird way, or like the friends, some of the friends that I had, like wouldn't talk to me when I was at school because they didn't want to be like associated with me. And that's like a weird sort of thing like that too, like hiding like that we're friends. Like I would, one of those people, I would like go on family vacations with them. And like with their, fa we went to like the Mall of America. We went to an exhibit to see the Titanic. I met the, her, her grandparents. I went camping with her, with her entire family. Her younger brother knew me and would come over and like talk to me and say hi whenever I would come over. But mm -hmm. when we were at school, she acted like she never knew me and we didn't know each other at all. And so it's like a weird sort of grooming thing like that of like they're grooming you to like keep everything secret and okay. because they're ashamed of you in some way and that's like just friendship wise that's all it was but it still was a situation where i didn't really know what was going on and i felt like i needed and i would let her keep it a secret because i wanted her as a friend <laughs> and yeah. there was like nobody else that i had and so i didn't really understand what was going on there but that's essentially that was like a grooming sort of situation with friends um and i eventually just ended it like i got tired of it when i was a freshman in high school and just stopped it even though i didn't have friends anymore i was like i don't want to deal with this anymore mm -hmm. um but it went on like that for a couple for like two or three years before that and she yeah. was upset with me when i when i stopped talking to her um 
which is funny to think about now. That's yeah. one of those people that apologized to me before I even graduated high school <laughs> about about doing that. And she tried to apologize to me when I was a senior and I yelled at her and told her to get out of my face. Um, I didn't even want to, I didn't want to hear it, which is a valid response. I guess yeah. that's like something to say is that you, if you ever watch this and you realize that somebody treated you badly in the past and you're mad about it now, um, you can go and yell at them about it and you don't have to like, even if they apologize to you, you don't have to like actually, you know, let them back in your life or like even accept their apology if you don't want to. Yeah. Be mad at them for the rest of your life. And there's nothing that anyone can say to you to like convince you otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> I had a manager groom me once and um, his end goal didn't actually work because I mean, I, it, it caught up to me eventually, but mm -hmm. I had a manager come into a job that I was working at. I had started up when the director of this place was kind of, you know, a couple of years from retirement was debating, oh, should I retire now? Should I retire later? My wife's fully retired, but I'm still working and I still like it. Mm -hmm. um, when he eventually did retire though, the manager who came in, he got me a title change. He got me a salary increase. And he would always talk about how like, you're the one on this team I can count on and like, I believe in you so much. You got so much great energy. And then after I got that job and was working it and was doing a lot of great things for him, any time that there was something going wrong, he'd be in upper management's ear saying, oh, it's because Amanda was doing the work. Or, oh, you know, it's it was the department that Amanda's working in that mm -hmm. was making it not work. Um, which, like, that's when I realized oh okay this this was never real like none of it was mm -hmm. ever real you saw that i am a most likely neuro spicy person who works way too hard and doesn't understand boundaries and you were like i need this one to be on my side yeah like to go with that um i've been for anyone who's watching this who doesn't know me or i've been unemployed since november i can't find a job and so because of being disabled, I just did like this meeting with a department that helps people with disabilities get jobs. And so they asked a lot of questions about like things in a job that would be hard for me to do or would be easy for me to do or whatever. And one of the questions they asked me is, is it easy for somebody to take advantage of you? Ooh. And I said, I, and, not, and I was like, not anymore. Um, and now, even when I'm scared about it, I will say something about that. Like that's at my last job, that's what got kicked me out of my first department because mm -hmm. the manager was mad that I went, <laughs> the manager was mad that I had to go to a PTSD, like partial hospitalization program and was gone for three months. And when I came back, she like yelled at me in front of everybody and, and I cried and stuff. And she was like, why are you crying? And things like that. And and I like had, and I talked to other management about that because I was like, I'm not just gonna like let somebody treat me like that anymore. But that was very much me, like how you were talking about yourself. That's the kind of stuff that I used to do is I used to, at that job, especially, I would work overtime before I went to that program because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be at home by myself, honestly. And so I would work crazy overtime at that job. And then after I came back and I was like, I don't want to do that anymore they were mad at me because I wouldn't work like overtime hours anymore. And I would leave exactly when I was supposed to leave. Um, and they kicked me out of the department for that. <laughs> and yeah. so after that, every other place that I worked at at that company, I just did like exactly what I was supposed to do and just, and would leave. I would never work overtime or do any extra stuff because I knew that it didn't matter in the end. And they were just like taking advantage of the fact that I was desperate for money. And I was like, I'd rather be short on money than have a management kind of use this against me because yeah. I know that it doesn't actually help anybody like make more money or get a better job in that sort of company. Like that company just deleted my entire department with no warning in November. And they definitely didn't care about all the people in that department that was, that was trying to work overtime to try to move up in the company that now had no job anymore. Yeah. And so like, that is something that happens, especially with um, autistic people or just neurodivergent people in general. We just kind of take people at face value or like we wanna be helpful, especially because we have such a hard time with social stuff. 
mm -hmm. that like we want to be able to please that person so that we don't have a because so we don't have like a hard time um yeah. along we want everything to go well and if somebody is like you know trying to can easily exploit that thing if they really want to if they really don't care about you they can make you do all this extra work and use you as a scapegoat if it goes wrong and also um take like credit for all the work that you've done if it goes well yeah is that actually that's what like the one of the managers that didn't like me at that first department that's the kind of stuff they would do is i asked them like one of them used to email our boss ahead of above her whenever one of us would make a mistake and she would tell us about it after they had fixed it already and so i asked her like why can't why don't you just like sh send us the email when you get these when you first get them so that we have a chance to see what mistakes we're making because i don't because if you don't tell me about it until it's like two or three weeks later i'm not i'm gonna do the same mistake many times and i would yeah. rather know what i did wrong and like fix it so i won't do it anymore and she thought that when i did that that was me trying to steal her job and okay. got like really weird about me and like said that she hated me when she didn't think I could hear her <laughs> one time. Oh she thought I was listening to music on my headphones and but I wasn't. I was just pretending like I was so that nobody would bother me. And so I heard her tell one of our coworkers that she hated me and asked like and asked her about it to like when we were talking with one of our managers and was like, "Why did you say that?" And she's like, "I don't." And she acted like I was out of line for bringing it up and I'm like, "You're the one who said it." Yep. I just heard it. I don't know why you said that thing. That's not my problem. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that can happen in like work situations where a manager is trying to use you to like further their career and then like dump you as soon as they don't need you anymore. Yeah. And that is a, a form of grooming that happens to a lot of adults that I'm not sure they even realize is happening. Yeah. But that can happen with kids with like coaches. It can. Yeah. You can exactly. be grilled to make the coach look better. Yeah. yeah. Like that happens a lot in some sports and stuff where coaches try to be close to a kid to like make them look good. And then as soon as they get injured or whatever, then they mm -hmm. like just toss them aside and don't, and don't talk to them anymore. Mm -hmm. The yeah. same thing. Even if it never gets to be like, like inappropriate romantically it doesn't have to for it to be inappropriate yeah and i mean like a lot of us will find out that the adults that we thought were good around us weren't as good as we thought that they were when we're adults i, I don't know how to say that better like um you know people we thought were great people you grow up you realize some things and you're like oh shoot they they actually were a predator all along like yeah. an example that i i probably brought this up on my page but like every school has the, has the one teacher right every school has to have a story um my school story happened by um i want to say it was the end of my junior year um someone who was a senior at the time had had a relationship with the favorite biology teacher like this guy got voted best teacher in the school the year before and he was a lot younger he came to the school as a student teacher while he was finishing up his master's and then stayed and um because he was like kind of a cooler younger dude because his biology lessons were fun he was the kind of person that like we got a a free period at my school where you could just like pick a classroom and do whatever work you needed to if you were in that class he would let people that weren't in his class stay in his classroom and people would just go there to hang out so um like he was one of those kinds of teachers very end of my junior year when it came out that he was dating this one girl on the dance team I remember everybody treating her terribly and I even myself there was there was like looks of like oh you're the reason that he got fired um and you know you go you go back to situations like that as an adult now and you're like why was he hanging out with his high school age students um part of what came out in all of that was pictures of him at a party and it's mm -hmm. like there is no reason why a 26 year old man should have been at parties. Yeah. Oh my God. 15, 16 year olds. Honestly, sometimes when it comes to like grooming, 
women do it more than men do sometimes because they usually don't get caught because people don't even realize that they're like because nobody was running around calling gabby hannah a groomer from what i can remember but she was she was grooming <laughs> she was grooming a lot well and and for women a lot of times it's seen as emotionally caretaking in a way that it's mm -hmm. it's just an extension of that but there there is a degree of boundaries you should have over somebody's life where it's like yes i do care about you as a person as a fellow human being but i am not your person for you to be telling everything and every life secret to mm -hmm. like, i just i always think about boy victims because it's so hard for them yeah um, or just not even just boys but it is really hard for them but anyone who's a victim where the victim is like a woman mm -hmm. it's it's so hard it's like shaheem is a really great creator on here and he was doing a video talking about the Melanie Martinez situation yesterday. And he talked about how he was sexually abused as a kid by a family friend. Mm -hmm. And when he told people eventually when he was older, that family and stuff that he told has apologized since, but they thought that he was lying because they didn't think it was possible for a boy to be abused like that. And that's like something that people say a lot. And it makes me want to kill everybody every time they say it, because it's like, boys are like literally told like societally that they should be happy about being raped sometimes like the way that people talk about it as like oh that's just like a notch on your belt and like oh this older woman just thinks that you're really cool you must be like cool and stuff and i'm like no <laughs> like no that's not that's not right <laughs> Well, it, I, I can speak to the sexuality piece too, because um, for, for some of our viewers, Shannon's asexual. So <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, but like there are situations where you're a teenager where things can feel consensual that like you're not prepared for, you're not ready for. And like, yes, you do have some agency in what you're doing, but you don't necessarily know all of the, the consequences of that. Tana's mm -hmm. a great example for that because she was 17, she was emancipated, she was living on her own, she already had some stardom and stuff. So I'm sure at the time she was like, this, you know, this is what I want to do. I am consenting. But yeah. when you grow up, you start to see things like maybe she thought she was going to have a relationship with Cody Co, this influencer who she looked up to. Oh, and, and also, like, why didn't any of you do anything about this or say anything about this until this moment like d'angelo wallace makes a video literally like destroying cody ko's life as he should like talking like i don't know if you watched that video but that video was very effective because he was talking directly to cody mm -hmm. like the entire video was like hey cody and at the end of the video he's like goodbye like you are done <laughs> after yeah. everything that i found you are over but the fact that him talking about it made all these like other people take it more seriously that like, I guess Keemstar even said like, oh yeah, I knew about that. Gabby Hanna told me about that happening. I was at that party and I saw that happen too. And it was like, Tana talked about this for years. None of you assholes ever said anything. D'Angelo Wallace didn't know that this happened mm -hmm. until Tana started talking about it recently. And he did uh, like the research you should do and like made a very quick like good video to like expose it all but like because he literally didn't know but like all of you guys know all of you knew and you just like sat there and was like no i'm not gonna say anything and just let him have all all these followers and clout that is like mostly young people on the internet and get let him get away with it all and because because you think tana is annoying like have you ever thought that maybe people like Tana and stuff that were younger girls that were seen as like out of control, that they were out of control because every person in their life was trying to abuse them. Like, I'm not trying to say that they were perfect, but they were young. A lot of those girls at those times were so young and mm -hmm. there's no way that the people around them actually gave a fuck about them because they obviously didn't. Well, and they're just trying to use them for money. Imagine having money during your teenage self-destructive years. Like, yeah. that's why people hate, hate, like, Tana had enough money to throw a, a her own little, like, festival thing, even though it was done poorly. I know Tana yeah. Fest was not, like, was not a success. Mm -hmm. One of the episodes I watched, Tana said, like, my management oh, yeah. at that time for those years 
was really exploitative and it was somebody that I trusted, but he was just trying to take it. He didn't care like if anything was a scam or if anything was done well, he just wanted to take all of the money. Mm -hmm. And he didn't care because I was the one that looked like she was the, she's the one that was look that looked bad after that. It mm -hmm. wasn't him that looked bad. It was her that looked bad. It was hurting her image. And he just got away with it all and got a bunch of money from her. And so once she got old enough to realize that was happening, she, that was just like another way that somebody groomed her then she switched. Mm -hmm. And that's why that stuff doesn't happen with her anymore because yeah. she's old enough to understand what was really going on then anyway. Um, because it was like, ups it honestly confounds me how she did like the whole Tanacon stuff and that people were mad at her specifically, a 19 year old. Mm -hmm. and I was like, she's, she was 19. Like, have you ever met a 19 year old? Like, yeah. of course they had no idea what they were doing. There are so many people that were older than her that were making all of those decisions. They were the ones that should have gotten all of the anger instead of her. I will say as as like an observer of that, I do think a fair amount of people had um, had some director like had directed some of their anger towards the Segway guy. I forgot his name, but he had like the bleached hair and the Segway and he's he seemed to be in charge of whatever company was throwing TanaCon, which actually was a little bit more appropriate to be mad at him. But he seemed very young, too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my point being like all of these things that we hate on Tana for are examples of somebody with trauma having money during their teenage destructive years. Like, yeah, she got into drinking, she got into drugs. If if there was more money at our disposal, who knows what we would have done when we were teenagers and self-destructing, you know? Well, I, I, that's one of those things that I get upset about that I want, I guess I could mention is the idea that like, if a kid is even somebody in their early 20s, but we'll go with kids, if there's a kid that is like doing things that seem my, my phone's gonna die soon. <laughs> but if there's a kid that's doing things that's like self destructive, and you don't understand why instead of thinking that they're just a bad kid, maybe try to talk to them to find out what's wrong because kids don't do things like that because they're a bad kid. They do things like that because they are like overwhelmed by something in their life. And this is like the way that they handle it is by doing self, like basically self harm things, but it makes them feel like they're in control of the bad things that are happening to them. And like too many times people realize later on, like, oh, that person that I was making fun of for being like a crazy person was actually going through a really hard time. And if I would have stopped like laughing at them, maybe I would have realized that then instead of feeling guilty about it years later. Yeah. And like that, that like cycle just keeps happening over and over again with like people in Hollywood, like people used to laugh at Amanda Bynes, she was like a meme on Twitter. And mm -hmm. that used and that made me so angry back in like 2011 2012. And people are doing the same thing with Jojo Siwa right now. And I'm like, I don't know why nobody bothers to learn anything. <laughs> like, cause it just keeps happening again. And I just like hope that people like Tana, whoever those young people would be right now, that if people have those sort of scandals happen again, that people remember her and take the time to think about what may be happening to make them act this way because no person who's like happy and healthy does self-destructive things like that mm -hmm. they just they do, they're not going to do that yeah yeah so i guess we can leave this off with like we are here for you guys if you feel like you're going through anything we are here to have conversations with you help you figure out ways to like find help that that mm -hmm. will keep you safe because that is our number one priority is your guys' safety um and yeah i, I can't think of anything else <laughs> that's pretty much it if you have any yeah. other things that you would want us to talk about just let us know and we'll talk about it yeah and then for next next episode, you guys, we're gonna watch um, the second Percy Jackson movie. So I'm we'll so we'll bring the energy back up into something light and funny because Shannon's about to get pissed, and I love it. I'm gonna probably have like notes about because I'm I'm so scared about what this movie is because even people 
I found this one of our videos on YouTube. I can look and see like videos that it's under like suggested or whatever. And one of the videos is by this myth, an account called the Mythology Guy. Mm -hmm. And he has an account. He has a video reacting to Sea of Monsters, and the the pictures of his face just look like he's dying. And it has like three million views. <laughs> Just from a Percy Jackson standpoint, I'm waiting for one. I'm waiting for you to hear literally one line because I know you're gonna be like, "What the hell? Why?" I'm why probably gonna start watching it soon, just to like, because I'm probably gonna have to watch it for a while and then stop, <laughs> yeah. and then like go back to it later because my brain will probably explode if I watch it all at once. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably be live tweeting each other throughout our watch. <laughs> just be like, "Why? Why?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let you go since your phone's dying 